says the problem with teachers is what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided that his best option in life was to become a teacher? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he reminds the other dinner guests that it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can, do. And those who can't, teach. I'm sorry. <laughs> I decide to bite my tongue instead of his <laughs> and resist the urge to remind the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers because we're eating after all and this is supposed to be polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher, Taylor. Come on, be honest. What do you make? And I wish he hadn't done that. Asked me to be honest. Because you see, I've got this little policy in my classroom about honesty and butt kicking, which is if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. <laughs> you want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor, and I can make an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best? I make kids sit through 40 minutes of study hall in absolute. No, you may not work in groups. No, you cannot ask me a question, so put your hand down. Why won't I let you go to the bathroom? Because you're bored and you don't really have to go to the bathroom, do you? I make parents tremble in fear when I call home at around dinner time. Hi, this is Mr. Molly. Hope I haven't called at a bad time. I just wanted to talk to you about something that your son said today in class. To the biggest bully in the grade, he said, Hey, why don't you leave that kid alone? I still cry sometimes, don't you? And that was the noblest act of courage that I have ever seen. I make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write, 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 and then I make them read. I make them spell. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Define nightly B A U T until they will never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all their work in math class and then hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them realize that if you've got this, then you follow this. And if somebody ever tries to judge you based on what you make, you give them this. Here, let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. Teachers, teachers make a difference. Now what about you? So what do we mean by spiritual development? Well, contrary to your first assumptions, this is not looking at the way we teach religious education or about different faiths, although that is definitely part of it. It's a much broader definition here. We're looking at encouraging children's sense of self-reflection, their ability to question their own views and those of others in a constructive and organized way, the willingness to reflect on their own behaviors and see what the consequences might be and why they might occur. It's about looking at a sense of awe and creativity, a willingness to reflect on their own creativity and on others. So while religion is part of it, this is not about teaching RE. And finally, we need to look at their emotional development. How well are they able to cope with challenges, with difficulties? Do they give up or are they resilient? Do they have that bounce back ability? So all of this comes under the idea of spiritual development. Pupils' moral development is shown by their interest in investigating and offering reasoned views about moral and ethical issues. It's about understanding once again the consequences of their actions and being able to recognise the difference between what feels right now and what is actually right in the long term.
people's social development is shown by their use of a range of social skills in different contexts. And finally, pupils' cultural development is shown by their understanding and appreciation of the wide range of cultural influences that have shaped their own heritage and the heritage of others. It's a real interest in exploring, understanding of and respect for cultural diversity and the extent to which they understand, accept, respect and celebrate that diversity. This is shown by their attitudes towards different faiths, ethnicities and socio-economic groups in their local, national and global communities. Prevent should remain an integral part of our counter-terrorism strategy contest a full update of which we will be publishing later this summer. Its aim should be to stop people becoming terrorists or supporting terrorism. PREVENT should address all forms of terrorism, including the extreme right wing. But PREVENT must also recognise and tackle the insidious impact of non-violent extremism, which can create an atmosphere conducive to terrorism and can popularise views which terrorists exploit. If organisations do not support the values of democracy, human rights, equality before the law, participation in society, if they don't accept these fundamental and universal values, then we won't, will not work with them and we will not fund Our them. Our new Prevent strategy will challenge the extremist ideology. It will help protect sectors and institutions from extremists and it will stop the radicalisation of vulnerable people. Above all, it will tackle the threat from homegrown terrorism, and I commend this statement to the House. <laughs>